right at the beginning of the case, we were just simply fixing their eventual hernia, right? There's no, there's no minor surgery, right? We always do the risk benefits with the patients, but, you know, for eventual hernia, we think it's going to be pretty, you know, straightforward. And, um, you know, we walked in uh, and we had the varus needle to gain laparoscopic laparoscopic access and so as we pressed in the he pressed the varus needle in and you know um, uh, we looked to see uh, for the the ceiling and we were gonna you know see if it was in the right compartment and all of a sudden blood started squirting out the energy in the room was obviously elevated and um, I could feel my heart like pounding in my ears it's the first time in a, in a real surgery in a real setting like this I've I ever felt um, kind of that, you know, oh crap kind of moment. But really, I, I mean, people talk about it all the time, but I've never actually been in a surgery where something like this happened. Um, and you really are, you don't know what's going to happen. So as we were dissecting uh, to try to get a Hassan placed, um, anesthesia informed us that the pressures dropped and dropped significantly. At which point you have blood return on a varus needle, you have unknown source of bleeding, and you have pressures dropping that require uh, res fluid resuscitation it's indication to uh, convert your laparoscopic approach to an open procedure and that's what we did so at that point it was full-fledged adrenaline rushing through the body um, past experiences I think you know um, not not so much in my like actual uh, experience being in other surgeries per se I think the only thing that that really uh, added to the situation is knowing that there's a hierarchy and the, the different team members obviously knowing the roles was important. The intercept project that we, um, that, I, that it was actually kind of funny because uh, that actually occurred like maybe a week before uh, my actual encounter in the, in the real OR with the real patient. I, you know, I was recruited when I was on minimally invasive surgery um, and I think it's a program that they do monthly. And um, it's basically, I didn't really understand what it was before I got there, but essentially you go into this OR and you have all the team members and um, uh, during this training simulation, uh, you know, something goes wrong, whether it's at the head of the bed with anesthesia or during the, in the operative field with possible bleeding. The problem wasn't what was important, the aspect of how do we work as a team, anesthesiology with the surgeon, with the circulators, with the support staff around um, how do we all coordinate and, and create a, a, a good outcome in what would be a less than desired circumstance? And then so when we did, the, probably the, the most beneficial thing of that clinical situa uh, simulation wasn't the simulation itself. That, that was good to see how everybody worked and interacted and established in communication. That was important. But actually the feedback at the end when we all stood in the circle and listening to like, you know, we don't have this piece of equipment and there's only one extra in case that we need it. And, you know, if X, Y, and Z happen, we're really at a disadvantage on our end. And, you know, listening to some of the staff's concerns and thinking like, wow, that's really super interesting uh, from just more of a, a systems approach. Um, so knowing that, like, when we converted our, our open procedure and then knowing that they would have to get other kids more tools, more, um, um, you know, support staff um, and how are they going to get them in there and calling people in I mean it, just knowing that background was there and that infrastructure was was helpful it was comforting almost so it allowed you to kind of focus on what you were doing not worried about everything else